Okay, how do you find clockwise moments? Now, first of all, it's important to remember that a moment is a turning effect of a force. So any force that makes something turn uh, in a circle uh, is called a moment. Now, to find a clockwise moment, the first thing you have to do always um, is to find the pivot. So that's the thing that doesn't move. What's the thing that, that the object is turning around? Now, here we can see the pivot. I've labeled it P. Usually, it's a triangle in a diagram. Uh, the second thing is to identify a force that will cause a movement in that in that direction, so in this case clockwise, so if you follow the path that the, the minute hand on the clock takes, any force that makes uh, the object move in that direction is, is, is a, a clockwise moment. So here we've got 8 newtons as a clockwise moment, and the 6 newtons, both of them are clockwise moments, we'll start on the 8. You then find the distance from the pivot to that force, so in this case it's 2 meters, and you multiply them together to find the clockwise moment of that force, so in this case the clockwise moment of the 8 newton force is 8 times 2, which is 16, and the units will be newtons times meters, so newton meters, 16 newton meters. You then find the, all the other clockwise moments, and you add them all together to find the total clockwise turning effect, the total clockwise moment of all the forces acting together. So in this case, for this particular pivot, the total clockwise moment will be 8 times 2, which is 16, plus 6 times 3, uh, which is 18, gives us a grand total of 34, Newton meters clockwise. And to find anti-clockwise, you just do exactly the same thing, only this time you're looking for forces that make it turn in the opposite direction, so in the anti-clockwise direction.